Hi, it's Nat here, and today I'm going to be discussing relationships. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because relationships are really fun and exciting, but let's be real. They can also be very challenging and sometimes they can be quite toxic. And as the law of attraction reveals, thoughts become things. So dwelling on frustration and misery in a relationship is only going to lead to way more of that. So if you're encountering relationship challenges, need relationship advice or even just dating tips, watch this video as I share five personal growth tips that will help your relationships. Now before I dive deep, I just want to encourage you to click on the link in the description below and download the two gifts that will help you to manifest more love into your life. All right, so tip number one, relationships require work. Now, you need to be prepared to get your hands dirty. When you meet that special someone and fall in love, it's natural to want the honeymoon phase to last forever. But at the end of the day, no matter how much you may have in common, a relationship is the bridging of two completely different worlds, completely different people and completely different backgrounds. You think about it. Each person, we all have our individual upbringing and family and environment and even if we're in a family with other siblings, our experience of our childhood is different, our programming is different, our beliefs are different. And then we start to grow up and all the influences of our lives. And then we get to this point and we're in this relationship and all of that history is coming with us into this relationship. You know, and especially if we're from different cultures, which is what I, I experience. I mean, I'm Australian, so I have, you know, a very different upbringing to what, you know, people here in the US have had. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong or good or bad. I'm just saying it's different. And when we can understand that and really, you know, uh, get into that and have empathy and compassion for a completely different upbringing, even if it challenges what we think is super important to us, it really helps us to um, create a beautiful relationship. So understand that there will be times when you don't see eye to eye on everything. But it's okay, because as you grow with your partner, you're learning more about them every single day. So if you're both willing to do the work, then expect to experience an even stronger relationship moving forward. Now for me, the key to this is communication. When you can talk about anything, uh, when you can open up these conversations, and especially, like I said, if you're talking about subjects that are really challenging, you know, what you believe to be true because your whole culture told you that it was this way and this other person's culture told them it was this way, um, then when you can go into that communication and go into that conversation with empathy and compassion, being open to learn something new and understanding that that person's um, opinion and that person's upbringing is, is fine and so is yours. So what are you going to do together as a couple to come up with what your truth is? Because both sides are true, but then as a couple, what is your truth going to be? And when you can open up those conversations in a really safe space where you're not judging each other uh, and you're not making the other person wrong, then you can have some really beautiful, enriched conversations that will help both of you grow, grow into an expanded human being. Now, what I also recommend, there's a great book, it's called Intellectual Foreplay. Now, Intellectual Foreplay is a book that's got hundreds of questions that you can ask your partner. You ask yourself, uh, you ask as a couple, then you ask your partner. And it covers everything from how you communicate, um, how, you know, what you think of a family, you know, what your culture, like all these different things. Um, and so when you can work your way through that book and do that in a safe space, then you've really been able to open up that amazing communication. And then after a while, it becomes easy. And then if something comes up in the future, you've already got the foundation of how you're going to communicate with each other. So those things aren't so much of a challenge. Okay. All right. So tip number two is to be honest. Now, call me old school, but honesty really is the best policy. Now, it may seem easier to cave under the pressure or just to go along with what your partner does, but being honest about your feelings is truly better for everyone in the long run. For your partner to really see you for who you really are, flaws and all, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and to be honest. Keeping your emotions and your feelings bottled up is no good for anyone, especially for you. So not only does being honest help your relationship, but it creates a more solid foundation. 
and it allows you to live a more authentic life. Now in my personal experience, for those of you who may not know my story, uh, my ex-husband Glenn and I were married for 18 years. And after 18 years, our marriage ended, um, yet we are still business partners and we're still really good friends. We have a great communication with each other. Um, but I realised that one of the things that I did towards my end of my marriage, and you know, and one of the first questions I asked when our marriage was over is like, what was my contribution? And I found that what I was doing was not speaking up for myself. When I didn't feel good about something, I didn't say it. You know, when there was things that I really wanted to, to, to bring up with Glenn, I kept thinking, well, I can't do that because he's going to react a certain way and just assumed that he was going to react a certain way. So then all of a sudden there is this huge chasm of all these things that I never said, like this big canyon. I started to get resentful and that really was a big contributor to the end of our marriage. So what is it that you're not saying? Was it a, what is it that you're not um, feeling that you can be in your truth with? And the thing is, when you can open up that safe space and be able to tell your truth and be honest, um, I know that your partner will be able to see you in a different light. And of course, it's now part of the reason that Glenn and I have such a great friendship is because now all those things that I was too scared to say before because I thought it would end my marriage, but by not saying them, it ended my marriage, um, I get to say now in a place that's really loving and authentic. All right? Okay, so step number three, tip number three carve out some time for you. <laughs> so do you ever feel like you've lost your sense of self in your relationship? Oh, that was me. Honestly, again, another mistake that I made, like I got so caught up and I mean, 18 years is a long time to be with someone. Um, but I remember when we, when we ended our marriage, that for the first few days, I'm like, who am I? I? I don't even know who I am without him because our lives were so entwined. And we did everything together. And it wasn't until like, you know, a week later that I started to shift that question and go, hmm, well, who do I want to be? Because now I get to step into the unknown. I get to step into this future as my individual self. But I had lost sight of who that was when I was in my marriage. You see, when you're spending quality time with your partner and you're just in love, time seems to fly by. And it can be easy to get caught up in the flow of a relationship to the point where you forget to make time for yourself. For me, the most healthiest of relationships are two individuals with two lives and two lots of interests that come together and create this third entity, which is, the, which is what the two of you are together. But, you know, you need to have a strong sense of self. You need to have a strong self-esteem. You know, you need to have interests outside of the relationship so that when you come in, you have different things to talk about and different things to share. You have to think about a relationship as two whole individuals embarking on a journey together. Before the relationship, you had your own friends, you had your own hobbies, your own life. And once you started sharing your life with another person, sometimes we kind of forget those things and we push out our own needs for the needs of our partner. Look, there's nothing wrong with learning and building together. But to sustain a healthy relationship, you've got to put yourself at the top of your to-do list. Now remember, at the end of the day, you are the most important person in your life and your well-being matters. So start getting into the habit of taking our quality time for you and for you only. And I tell you, as you show up in that relationship, you show up as a more whole, complete, well-adjusted and happy person. And that's got to be better for both of you. All right, so tip number four is to be the best of friends and the best of partners. So how would you describe your best friend? Are they someone who appreciates you for who you are? Someone who isn't afraid to be honest with you? Uh, someone that you love spending time with? Someone you can trust and that you can rely on? Now, how would you describe your partner? Now, a significant other should be described in exactly the same way. So if you make the foundation of your relationship that of a true friendship, you'll be on your way to a long-lasting relationship. And when I look at Glenn and myself, we were always good friends. We were always good partners. We're still good friends and we're still good partners even though we're not married anymore. You know, and the thing is, Glenn enriches my life in so many ways. I have received so many gifts from him. You know, he's my rock. And despite the marriage situation, 
we can still be there for each other. And really, who wouldn't want that? You see, when you respect each other as friends, you add an unshakable respect for the relationship as partners. Okay, number five is if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So do you ever get that little feeling in your gut that something's not quite right? Well, don't ignore that because that feeling likely means that something is not right. So when you've gotten to the point in a relationship where you're fighting all the time and, the, you know, and you're fighting the person and not exactly the problem, it may be time to move on. Now, arguments are going to happen, but you must remember there is never any winners in a fight. A fight is just a fight for fight's sake. Now, you may have um, uh, conversations about challenging situations, then you're moving through into a solution, but you've got a, like a real foundation on how you're communicating with each other, so you're doing it in a loving and respectful way, but when you're fighting, no one ever wins. Now, you might feel like that you, you know, you've got to give everything you can to hold on to a dwindling relationship simply for the sake of how long you've been together, or perhaps there may be children involved. But if you're fighting all the time, is this what you want to model for your children? You know, and then let's say that you've been in a relationship for 10 years. You, you know, ask yourself this question. If you've been in a relationship for 10 years and you're not happy right now, do you see it lasting another 10 years? Could you see yourself in this relationship in another 10 years? So if the answer is no, it's time to take action. But if there's something you've got that's telling you that something just isn't right, don't be afraid to embrace those feelings. It's not a failure. It's vulnerability looking at you right in the face and saying, I am fully capable of navigating my own life and I trust the process. Now with Glenn and I, we are still the best of friends to this day. And this is the timeless advice that I discovered through trial and error of us navigating our own separation. So I hope that these timeless tips will not only show you how to embrace relationships in your life, but also help you to uncover more about yourself. Now, before I go, I'd love to hear from you. Please comment in the box below if you have any other Law of Attraction tips that could help our community. And don't forget to subscribe to the Mind Movies YouTube channel for more videos on personal growth and the Law of Attraction. Again, my name is Natalie Dadwell. Thank you for watching and bye for now.